Hello everybody and welcome back to another lap of the Nurburgring. As the title will suggest, uh, this is about how to deal with traffic, but first I'm just showing you a little bit of uh, me getting familiar with the P1, finding out where the limits are, dealing with some issues, some traffic, clearly pushing it a little too hard here. And when I say a little, I mean it because I almost recover. Crazy car, absolutely insane. The acceleration, the braking, the handling is more than competent. And uh, here is the main topic coming up. Now, uh, this is going to be an example of what not to do with traffic, but later on towards the end of the lap that I put in later, there will be an example of what to do. Basically, I'm coming up on a pretty hot, and when I see him get to the right, I'm like, oh, he's a normal person, I can go by, and he starts coming back across. And just lifting and veering for the grass caused the car to jerk in a really unpredictable way, basically throwing me into the wall, ricocheting off uh, both walls. That's what it looked like from his angle. It's almost as if he's, like, wearing blinders and doesn't see what's in his mirror. So I'm a pretty good guy, I decide I'm going to give him a second chance. I come up on him hot, this time holding my horn down and flashing my lights, and he still just stays to the left. Now, that is not how you deal with traffic, uh, especially stubborn traffic. I almost killed my Lamborghini friend there. Luckily, he got away unscathed, but um, I jumped back to the pits, and you can see somebody had something to say about it already. Somebody was watching, which uh, caught me off guard. Keep things uh, censored and YouTube-friendly. Um, but I still had to vent a little bit. Uh, just made my case, and then uh, the dude driving with the red BMW, the crossbow, decides to stick his two cents in and tells the P1 to learn offline. Now, I don't know how uh, playing offline will teach you how to deal with idiots on the road. I mean, you, the AI just aren't aren't even that bad. So um, I state my case, and you know I've clearly had issues with uh, losing my cool in the past. So <laughs> I decide, you know what? forget this I'm just going out like somebody saw it they're addressing it it's not just a 2v1 he said they said he said kind of situation where you know my word would kind of be squandered by the the numbers somebody saw it and you can see he was actually watching them for a while because they are repeat offenders for the same kind of incident but not gonna worry about that finally gonna get out here with uh, fueled by rage <laughs> and uh, try and get a clean lap in with this p1 because I know it can do a sub 7 so easily if you just don't overcook it, which is the big issue with it. Um, luckily that uh, mod actually saw what I saw, where the E92 opened up the door and then closed it on me. And, uh, you know, that that helps sometimes. Learn to pass, he says, which is just hilarious. I've dealt with a few people like him who block, like that. they take a defensive line constantly and swing across and try not to let you pass. And then they're like, well, you have the horsepower. Why didn't you just like wait for an opening? And it's like, no, I have the handling ability too, but you're, you're taking defensive lines. It makes it ridiculously unnecessarily challenging for something that's not a race. Anyway, we're gonna get out here. And uh, I just love the friend's opinion there uh, from going to tell me to practice offline to whatever, I'm over it, so. It's funny how people like that uh, tend to go down that kind of road when they start to get uh, questioned. Their decisions start to get, uh, you know, put under a microscope all of a sudden. It's like, oh, forget that. Let's move on. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Coming up to the crest where I almost lost it. The uh, Well, I did lose it the one time. This time I choose to break before the crest. And we still get a little air there. So, insanely quick car. Just so mad. I could have pushed it a little further. You, you can see the... Uh, the brick curb off to the left there. There's plenty of road left to, to utilize. Coming down the straight right here, literally utilizing all, like as much as the road as possible. I had to jerk the car back to the left. A little safety lift over that crest, which turned out to be pretty good. The car got a little airborne. And coming around this very dangerous section nicely. Uh, 9K flat is just ripping that BMW apart right now, and I'm enjoying every bit of it. <laughs> I, did, and I totally ignored the chat. I knew they were talking about our incident, but I was like, you know what? I felt like I really wasn't in the wrong, the, uh, well, you know, you know what I'm saying. I, I definitely don't, uh, condemn, uh, condone dealing with a situation the way I did. There were, it's just not okay to ram people, and, like, if the mod didn't see that, then there'd be two people telling me that I'm bad, and maybe they report you, and, you know, it could backfire big time. I got very lucky on this occasion. So... Now he's pulling out the, I didn't have a place to pull over, and <laughs> 9k flat's just, like, not budging, which I absolutely love reading back on it. It was a beautiful thing. Flying around the section with the P1, I mean, it is just doing such a good job keeping on the track. It's quite a competent car. 
you can you can really brake as late as possible. It's it's not one of those cars that has more power than braking ability or more, you know, braking ability and power than cornering ability. It is very well rounded for such a quick car. Coming around, miss hit miss. I'm actually getting that section down relatively consistently. Braking about as late as ever coming into here, and it just turns me in nicely. A little bit of tire squeal from the understeer. Uh, they weren't liking me that much, but uh, I've been pretty good to them. So the front tires, that is. So not the end of the world. It worked out pretty well there. Breaking up nicely for this section, staying well clear of the curves, and getting a very good line up the hill here, carrying all my speed. A little bit. I could have used a bit more road probably and carried a bit more speed, but you know what? This is like my sixth time out. I just want to get a lap in. I know even if I drive cautiously, there's a good chance it'll be a sub seven, like well below sub seven. So now that guy's saying it's my responsibility to slow down and wait for him to decide when to open up. Um, I don't know if he's ever watched uh, cars lap the Nurburgring in real life, like dash cams and stuff. It's not how it works, bud. You get the heck out of the way. It's just that simple. And uh, we can disregard the chat now, because these gentlemen basically start reiterating themselves in Swedish. How do I know that? I Google translated every word. <laughs> I've got that much time. And it was funny. You know, I learned a little bit of Swedish. Um, the spelling, at least. I can't pronounce a word, but, you know, you learn a little every day. Coming up to the corner before Carousel, we're going to do a little caution break here, just to make sure I don't drive wide. Probably was a little more than enough. And going in very deep to this corner, but it turns out to be perfect for a beautiful cutback, a very late apex, which is exactly what you want there. Coming up here, we're going to go over 200 kilometers an hour coming up to the carousel. And through the magic of video editing, I take it perfectly. Really, you can see I was up on the inside there, which in real life can damage your transmission, I've been told. So not the best carousel, but we made it look good for you guys. No big deal. Hi, Reddit, by the way. You guys make up like 50% of my viewership or something like that, so, hello. <laughs> Coming up to one of my favorite sections. This, in a good handling car, is just a dream. Like, taking this in the BMW M235i racing spec or whatever it's called. This is like one of the funnest sections here, because that thing just has grip for days. This is uh, not bad by any standards in terms of grip, and you can actually really just ring out this section. It's a, it's a blast. Ring out the car in this section. Coming over the crest here using all the curb, that was how you're supposed to take it at a very good pace. Hitting a first apex there, coming back, hitting that curb a little too soon, but it turns out perfectly for this section leading up to YouTube corner, using quite a bit of curb around there, as you do. Very quick around this section, giving the people something to put on YouTube. Oh wait, they don't do that anymore. Um, coming up to this big breaking point here, running a little wide, but this car is just so competent, it collects itself just in time for the curb. Now, I have a bit of a scare here where I take a little too much curb and it unsettles the car. And as it snaps back, it puts me over the other curb, off to the wrong side of the road for the jump. And somehow I fall back into the line without getting any air or anything. Played it a little cautious and it paid off. Um, I don't speak Swedish, but everybody recognizes the little uh, face of disappointment. Something tells me 9K flat 6 is banging his head against a wall right now. Very quick over here. Actually going up on two wheels there for a quick second. That was a beautiful shot. Might use it as the thumbnail. We'll see. Has nothing to do with traffic, but neither does this lap. Um, coming around here, I actually feel like I hit that section relatively well. I could have hit that apex around the second bend there, but the first bend, I, I think I took it great. A little wide, a little deep, going around the second carousel. And uh, we're looking pretty good. If I can just keep my stuff together, it's not looking like a, a sub-630, but maybe a sub-640. If any car can cover this straight before the gantry in less than 10 seconds, this is the car. So here we go, absolutely pinning it right now, and a 638, pretty damn quick, not bad for a first full lap uh, in the P1. I've driven other fast cars before, like the LaFerrari and stuff, so I understand that the faster the car, the more the ring kind of changes, the braking points and stuff, the lifting points, all that fun stuff, but uh, yeah, not bad at all. And I don't do this very often, but um, I come into the pits, I see a Lamborghini per Huracan Performante, and I decide to go right back out. And this happens to be just when our friends finish their conversation. And there's our red BMW friend again. Let's see if he's made any changes. Drastic changes. He stays all the way to the right like it's what he's supposed to do. And it's important. So, awesome stuff. Now, uh, let's take a look at some good examples of how to let traffic pass. Here we have a BMW drifting around a corner. You know, whatever. But he still has enough control to stay to the right. That's the thing. 
It's a simple matter of lifting off so you are no longer on the limit and you have the control to move to the right. Alpha making it look easy there, not losing any time at all. Coming around this bend here, you're going to see um, yeah, well, another fast car coming up. Uh, first there's me, then the Alpha. Alpha goes a little wide, and then there is the Zonda. Sounding like a banshee. And still, <laughs> BMW's still drifting, but it's no problem because he's doing it on the right side. It's not that difficult. So, yes, I lost my temper before, but you know what? That guy was, uh, that guy needed a swift punt in the rear. So here we go. I have a Zonda coming up on me big time fast. And what do I do? I choose to miss an apex and stay to the right. And look how quickly he gets by. He even gives me a little thank you flash of the lights. That's how it's done. And it happens to be the mod who's been sticking up for me the whole time. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, back to the pits. I just tell him thank you. Like, thanks for seeing that and dealing with it. Like, it actually, somebody learned their lesson swiftly. That doesn't happen very often with someone stubborn like that red BMW. But uh, I apologize for losing my cool, too, because, you know, it's just not all right. At the end of the day, that can make people on the, that can make the server look bad, and uh, we want people to come play. That's the biggest thing. So it's best to keep your cool. Uh, but he, he said I was in the right, which I, you know, is nice of him, but I, I think I could have handled the situation better. Uh, best way to end the video, a little smack talk. Uh, my friend in the expo is still here, which is a sub-7 car, and I ask him, no sub-7? Not today, he answers. Um, so I give him the only response I could think of. Maybe you should practice offline. So I uh, didn't really respond, he's just sitting at the gate here, so I decided to lighten the conversation a little bit. And tell him I'm just kidding, let's be friends, and he, he actually beats me to it with a snarky response. He doesn't ram people off the track, so he doesn't need to practice offline. Like, I don't understand what he thinks practicing offline will do uh, for you when it comes to dealing with real people in traffic. But he got me pretty good there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, have a great day. Bye-bye.